In the near future, the line between human and machine is disappearing. Advancements in technology have allowed humans to enhance themselves with cybernetic parts. Honka Robotics, funded by the government, is developing a military cyborg. By transplanting a human brain into a fully synthetic body, they will combine the strongest attributes of a human and a robot. The movie opens with Mira, a woman that has just been in a terrorist attack. Her body couldn't survive, but her brain is still Still alive, Honka scientist Dr. Oulette is able to take out her brain and put it in a cyborg body. The operation becomes successful, saving Mira's life, and for the first time, Honka has just created a fully human and machine hybrid. Honka Robotics CEO Cutter watches as the process is completed and sends Mira to Section 9 an anti-terrorism division. As this new creation will make him millions, Dr. Owlette was not happy by this decision, but couldn't do anything. We are taken to one year later. Mira has become a major in the force. We follow her as she monitors a Honka representative, Dr. Osmond, and an African ambassador making a deal for a new tech. Mira is receiving her orders from Section 9 Chief Aramaki and works alongside Batu. In the meeting, several Geisha bots, servant bots, start to attack the people in the room. One of the Geisha bots hacks into Dr. Osman's neck and kills him. As this is happening, Mira jumps into the building and kills off most of the bots but wasn't able to save Dr. Osmond. She shoots off the Geisha bot, but before it dies, it says the word, quote, cooperate with Honka Robotics and be destroyed. Mira then shoots it on the head and finishes it off. Later, the Section 9 team meets with Aramaki to discuss the attack. They learn that the Geisha bots were hacked by a mysterious man that calls himself Guzi. He also murdered three more Honka scientists on that day and left the same message, quote, cooperate with Honka Robotics and be destroyed. Aramaki sends Mira and Batu to the forensic labs on their way to the lab. Mira reveals that she has been having glitches in her system. She keeps seeing fragmented images once in a while and it has been distracting her from doing her job well. Mira thinks it might be memories from her past as she doesn't remember anything before the accident. They arrive at Honka. Mira visits Dr. Owlet and informs her about her glitches, but Owlet dismisses it quickly, telling her it's not a big deal. Mira and Batu then go to the lab to meet with Dr. Dolin, who have been examining the Geisha bot's body. She still has not been able to trace the hacker, and Mira offers to deep dive into the Geisha's mind so she can get more info. Dolin warns her that this is very risky since there could be an implanted virus in the geisha's body, but Mira doesn't listen. She deep dives into the bot's brain and finds herself walking through a nightclub with distorted images. She is then grabbed and suffocated by a faceless mob, causing her real body to spasm and forcing Batu to pull her out of the connection. When she gets back, Mira tells them that she knows where the nightclub is. Mira and Batu go to the nightclub. They separate, so not as to be suspicious. While investigating, Mira Mira is pulled into a room by two men who handcuff her and force her to dance by tasing her. Mira tries to call for help, but the room blocks the signal with Batu. Batu, who is in the bar, starts a fight, killing the guards, and Mira also breaks off her handcuff and beats up the men. They both go into the basement where Mira finds a room. When she opens it, she sees Kuze in front of her, but when she tries to go close to him, he disappears. As Batu gets close to the room, Mira Mira notices it is a trap and pushes Batu away before a bomb blows up. Batu is saved but loses his eyes. Mira's body is also damaged, so they are taken to Honka, where Batu receives cybernetic eyes which are more advanced and can do more things while Mira's body is repaired. Meanwhile, Cutter meets with Aramaki. He is filled with anger because Aramaki allowed Mira to deep dive, which could have been very dangerous if she was hacked, as this would lose him millions because Mira is still the only full 
fully human and robot combination, and he needs to experiment with her to figure out to make others like her. But Aramaki tells Cutter to be careful who he is threatening, since Aramaki answers to the Prime Minister and not him. The next day, Kuze breaks into the lab and finds Dr. Dolan alone. He asks her about Project 2571, and when she doesn't tell him the answer, he kills her and leaves. Mira and her team arrive at the scene shortly after. Mira pulls a drive out of Dolan's hand, which contains names of other Hanka associates, including Owlet. Mira figures she is Keizu's next target. Keizu hacks into two truck drivers and controls them and crashes them into Owlet's car. She crawls out of the flip vehicle, but one of the men puts his gun on her and asks her about the same project. Owlet doesn't answer, and just before he shoots her, Mira and her team arrive and stop the men. The main man, Lee, is interrogated by Mira after Kuze's connection is severed. She asks him who Kuze is, but Lee doesn't know anything. He tells her he went out to get his daughter and doesn't remember anything else. The team figures Kuze implanted a fake memory on Lee as Lee never had a daughter and lives alone. Kuze then speaks through Lee to threaten Section 9 before making Lee jump to hang himself. Section 9 agents have traced Kuze's signal while he was talking. Mira and her team travel to the specified location and find an illegal cybernation operation, which is being used by Kuze. The team kill the guards and move through the building. Mira goes into a dark room and gets ambushed and abducted by Kuze's men. She wakes up shortly after being tied to a machine. Kuze, finally revealing himself, stands before her. He has created a network with other humanoid cyborg bodies, which will let him and his team live once their body dies. Kuze then releases Mira, and she uses this opportunity to shoot him a few times before stopping when she sees a tattoo that exactly matches her glitches. Kuze reveals that he was a test subject of Honka's before her, but considered a failure and a freak on account of of his deformed outcome. He tells her Honka is not a good company fighting terrorism, but an evil organization that experiments on humans without their consent. Mira is shaken by this revelation, but Batu gets there to save her before they could finish talking. Kuze escapes and Mira follows him as Batu watches her. Mira then appears in Owlet's room and confronts her about the info she got from Kuze. Owlet confesses and reveals that there were 98 failed experiments before Mira. She also reveals that Mira's memory of surviving a terrorist attack was a fake memory, so she will be motivated to fight terrorists. Owlette tries to explain that Cutter forced her to implant the fake memory, but Mira leaves filled with anger. That night, Batu finds Mira in her usual hiding place. They talk a little, and she asks him to take her back to Honka. He obliges, and just as they get there, she she is taken by Cutter's guards and sedated so she can't move. Cutter then orders Owlette to terminate Mira as she is now a liability and could become like Kuze, but Owlette argues and asks just to erase her memory so she can't remember the past few days. But Cutter is not convinced and gives her a serum and orders her to do it herself. Mira figures she is getting killed but can't do anything about it, but Owlette instead gives gives her an energy serum and releases her, also giving her an address so she can find out her true identity. Mira takes the address and runs out, beating up any guards that tried to stop her. Cutter then shoots and kills Owlette, but tells Aramaki that Mira killed Owlette. Mira follows the address to what turns out to be her old home. Her mother, who was told that her daughter was dead, never believed that, and even though Mira is in a new body, her mother figures out that she is her daughter. As she leaves, Mira calls Aramaki. He tells her that Owlette is dead and that Cutter says she killed her, but he believes her and plans to take Cutter into custody. Cutter hacks the comms to hear their conversation and sends his men to kill Section 9 members, but all of them survive and kill their attackers. Meanwhile, Mira meets with Kuze at a hideout, which she remembered from her past memory, which is now coming 
coming back to her since she is not taking the medication Cutter gave her. She remembers that Kuze's real name was Hideo, and they were a group that didn't want to be cyborgs, but were forcibly taken and experimented on by Honka. But before they can talk more, they are interrupted by a missile that is being controlled by Cutter. The first blow damages Kuze heavily, and Cutter uses a remote-controlled spider tank to finish them off. Cutter gets the upper hand at first, but just before he can kill off Kuze, Mira jumps onto the tank and uses all her strength, causing her arm to rip off as she destroys the tank's weapon system. They both lie on the ground. Kuze offers to take her to his system, but she refuses, saying she is not ready to give up yet. But then Cutter's snipers ride in on a chopper and shoot Kuze on the face, killing him. We see Kuze's jumped off to his system just before they kill him, though. As the snipers turn to her, Aramaki's men destroy the chopper, and Batu picks her up from the ground. Aramaki then finds Cutter in his office and shoots him once so he can't move. He contacts Mira and gets her consent to execute Cutter. He then shoots Cutter multiple times, killing him. Sometime later, Mira visits her own grave with her mother, and they agree to not go back there again. In the last scene, we see Moira, as she is on another mission, working with Section 9, and the movie ends as she leaps off a building. The end.